It's about to get historical. Hello world, welcome back to my channel. Today's let's talk about is something I am very interested in and it's something that is very near and dear to my heart and is my chauffeur comes undone. We are going to be talking about insert cool graphic that I made myself. <laughs> Mary Shelley. Oh, what I can say about Mary freaking Shelley. Let's I start unpacking it. I am interested and I am concentrated and I am caffeinated so let's go. Okay, who was Mary Shelley? First question on the board that I wrote myself, look how pretty it is. Her name is Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin Shelley. She was born on August 30th, 1797. So her birthday is tomorrow. Today's August 29th. Tomorrow is gonna be August 30th. She was born in 1797, which would make her Excuse me while I grab my phone. 2016 minus 1797. 219 years old today. I just threw my phone at a scissors. Cool. Who is she? She is the daughter of philosopher and political writer William Godwin and feminist writer Mary Wollstonecraft. She did not receive a formal education, which is mind blowing. For somebody who was raised in a literary household, which is due to the fact that her father remarried to a, a lady who did not like Mary. All of her stepsisters and stepbrothers received a formal education. Mary did not. She didn't receive a formal education, but she was assisted in learning by her father's extensive library, which makes sense. He's a political writer and a philosopher. Of course, he's gonna be having books everywhere. They said that she could often be found reading. Makes sense, cause she only had a library to learn from. In 1814, Mary, being 17 at the time, began a relationship with poet Percy Shelley. Some people may know that name. He's pretty well known. But it was controversial at the time because Percy was married to somebody else. Yes. And he was a lot older than her. They took a huge trip around the continent. Her father did not speak to her for a long time because of the relationship between her and Percy. If I eloped with a man who was like 15 years my senior. Pretty sure my dad wouldn't be too ecstatic about it. They were accompanied by a lot of famous poets and writers including none other than Lord freaking Byron. They entertained themselves by reading ghost stories and on one rainy day Lord Byron suggested that they should they should all try their hand at writing their own horror story. It was at that time that Mary Shelley began work on what would become Frankenstein, or as many people call it, the modern Prometheus. Okay, before we move on to what did she do, which is Frankenstein, and what is her legacy, which is Frankenstein, we are going to be finishing out the rest of her life. That sounds bad. Mary Shelley became a widow at the age of 24. She worked very hard to support herself and her only surviving child. She had four children and only one who was named Percy Shelley survived to adulthood. She wrote a lot more novels, including the science fiction tale of The Last Man. She also devoted herself to promoting her husband's poetry and preserving his place in literary history. Shelley faced some opposition from her late husband's father, who always disapproved of his son's bohemian lifestyle. Bohemian meaning adultery, apparently. She died of brain cancer on February 1st, 1851 at the age of 53 
in London, England. Now we are going to go on to the question, what did she do? Oh, she did lots of things. She did lots of things. I'm going to tell you about all of the things. First off, she wrote travel essays. She was traveling around the continent and so she was like, hey, let me write about it. And she did. They are being quoted as her non-fiction prose, particularly in the form of biography and travel essay, ranks with some of the best writings in those genres. It must be admitted that the non-fiction is superior writing. Mary herself thought so. Near the end of her literary career, she told her husband's publisher, Edward Markson, I should prefer quieter work, such as my lives for the cyclopedia, such as my lives for the cyclopedia, which I think I do much better than romancing. Now, let's talk about her legacy. This is where we're going to get serious about the novel that is Frankenstein. Frankenstein is a novel, as many of you may have heard me say. It is a novel that was written in 1816, 1817. It was published in 1818. That was 200 plus years ago. And many of you know of the Frankenstein that I drew. Yeah, look, and it is cute, isn't it? That's not the Frankenstein that's in the book. Okay, I'm gonna do a whole separate topic on the book and what drives me crazy about modern adaptions of the book, what I need from modern adaptions, and also where Frankenstein is held in my heart because <laughs> it's so good. Okay, her legacy, Frankenstein. It was literally the first science fiction novel ever. The genre didn't even exist. She created it in 1818. She published her book anonymously. Frankenstein was a hit. Of course it was. It still is. It was a hit. People put plays on about it and she saw one herself and then she wrote to the uh, producer of the show and she wrote Lo and behold, I find myself famous. And the title pages in her later novels carry the words by the author of Frankenstein. She loved this book. I love this book. I love that she loved this book. It's, there's a whole lot of love there. And it wasn't even praised as one of her best works ever, but I think it is. So it was the first science fiction novel ever. She was the first science fiction novel writer, and a woman can say that they did that. She didn't even have a formal education. I'm just in awe of her. I'm in awe of what she was able to do. She didn't even hi hold it in her highest regard. So then let me say this about it. However highly praised Mary Shelley's travel books were, you see the elements of those books in Frankenstein itself, whether it be France or the Arctic Ocean that the monster traveled to, there is so much description within that novel that you're like, I feel like I'm there. And that was that's what she was known for because in travel essays, you're traveling around the continent. You're like, hey, let me write about it. So you've got to be like, this is what the mountains look like. This is what the stream look like. So people can be there and be invested in it and that is totally what she did in Frankenstein. That says to me a lot more about Mary Shelley and her books. More than any other critic has ever had to say about her. Because she wrote so many different styles of genres throughout her whole life but there was always one common element and that was her description. Her description was able to allow her to transcend the travel genre, the drama genre, and as well as let her to be able to introduce the world to science fiction, which in my mind and in many other people's minds cements her as one of the greatest literary writers of all time, which is mind blowing because this all started on a challenge from Lord Byron. He was like, hey guys, hey dudes, while we're bored, 
why don't we write our own horror story? And she wrote one and it was the greatest novel ever. Based on a challenge, she wrote one of the best literary works this world has ever seen. This work of art launched an entire genre that has blown up in a way that people had not seen before with books and with the introduction of television, the science fiction genre is not going away, ever. And that is all in part to one lady named Mary Shelley. Being a woman in the 1800s who did not receive a formal education, who witnessed her husband's death at the age of 24, and as, as well as the death of three of her children and two miscarriages, she was able to understand Frankenstein. She understood both sides of Frankenstein. Follow me in this. She knew that Frankenstein and his monster were two halves of one whole. Everybody knows the intellectual and the logical side that is Dr. Frankenstein, as well as the childlike, destructive, immature being that is his monster. Being able to understand that because she lived it, she was intellectual, she was raised in an intellectual household, she knew philosophy, she understood prose and how to write it, but she also saw destruction in the world. She saw her mother die when she was only 11 days old. She saw her father marry a woman that did not like her. She was sent away at a young age from her father who she loved dearly, and then her father was estranged from her for a very long time. She witnessed the death of her husband and her three children, as well as living through two miscarriages. She understood darkness. She understood what it takes to become a monster. Being able to understand it and write it in such a way that lets other people understand their monster and their own doctor is one of the greatest literary feats that this world has ever seen. Which is why to this day she is my favorite author. And if you've never read any of her books such as Frankenstein, also known as The Modern Prometheus or The Last Man, I highly encourage every person who sees this to do so. So that maybe by reading this you can understand your monster a little bit better and not let it get away from you like Dr. Frankenstein did. He let it get away and it, it didn't it didn't do good things. Which we're gonna get into in my other video about Frankenstein because I have a lot of feelings about it. Okay. Thank you for listening to my tirade. Please check out any of her books. She just is so intellectual and so ahead of her time. And so please check out any of her books. If you like what I do here, which is just nonsensical, historical, and weird things, please subscribe or like this uh, video. If you like Frankenstein, my drawing, like it. <laughs> it's cute, isn't it? Okay, well, that's all for me for now. So, uh, yep. <laughs>